Welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. Today we're going to learn how to create this slick shiny record button in this tutorial which is another in the series of tutorials brought to you by myself and Howard from iceflowstudios.com inspired by the high quality graphics provided over at 365psd.com where you can download a free PSD every single day. It's incredibly high quality stuff. You should go check it out. Let's get started. I'm going to bring back the interface for Photoshop and I'm going to go File New and we're going to create a brand new document here. We can give it a name, say Rec BTN and Width 1280, Height 720, perfect. Go ahead and hit OK. Now what we're going to do is, well, I'm going to collapse my Adjustments panel and I'm going to open up my Layers panel and we're going to double click on our foreground color right down over here to bring up our color picker and we're going to set our color to 404040. Essentially it's just a dark gray, hit OK, and I'm going to hit Alt Backspace to fill the document with that dark gray. Now, we're going to go Filter, Noise, Add Noise, and what we're going to do is just add a very subtle noise. It's going to be fairly noticeable, but still pretty subtle. So we're going to go Amount 2%, we're going to go Gaussian, and we're not going to check on Monochromatic. It's going to introduce a very, very tiny, tiny bit of color. So we're going to go ahead and hit OK. Now that we've done that, we're going to go ahead and grab the ellipse tool right over here. The ellipse tool located beneath the rectangle tool. Hotkey is U, but you may need to hit Shift U to tap down to that tool. So ellipse tool, check out the control bar up here at the top. It's your tool options bar. We're going to go ahead and make sure that we have this set to draw paths, number one. And over here, you just want to make sure it's set to the first of these four shape areas. In this case, it probably doesn't matter as much, but it's just a good habit to get into. Make sure that you're working with the correct drawing mode, if you will. Now, hold down the Shift key. I'm actually going to zoom in a little bit here. Hold down the Shift key and just drag out a nice little circle. We can resize this button at the end, so if we created a little large now, don't worry about it. Now we have our initial path. We're going to go Layer, New Fill Layer, Solid Color. We're going to name this layer Metal. Hit OK. And we're going to fill this with white, just something that's noticeable for now. We're going to get rid of this virtually immediately. We're going to go Layer, Layer Style, Blending Options. And here we go. Bam. Reduce that fill opacity to 0%, sucks that white right out of there, and it's going to allow us to use this shape and apply layer styles to the shape without actually seeing any of the fill of that shape. Let's go ahead and apply an inner shadow here. Great. Inner shadow. We're going to set the blend mode to normal. Leave the fill color as black. Set the opacity to 50. Uncheck global light. We don't want to be affecting light all over our document, especially if we've, we've used global light before. We're going to set the angle to 90. And we're going to set the distance to 2. And the size, let's go with 0. Now that we've done that, we're going to go ahead and apply an inner glow. Here the inner glow is really, it's not going to be a glow so much as maybe an inner shadow uh, or a second inner shadow that just runs around the entire inside of our button. So we're going to set this to multiply, a little bit of interaction with the graphics below it. Notice it's disappeared. That's just because our foreground, or excuse me, our glow color is white. If we go ahead and set this to black, which is what I want, you're going to see it's going to come back a little bit. It's pretty subtle still. Don't worry. A lot of this effect is kind of subtle. We're going to set the opacity to 85%, and we're going to set the size to 2. So you can see, again, pretty darn subtle. So now that we've done that, let's hit OK and check out what we've got. Go ahead and hit OK. And I'm just going to select my background layer. It's going to deselect that layer. We've got a very, very subtle little shape happening there. Great. Now that we've done that, we're ready to go ahead and apply a gradient to this. Actually, give it that metal look. Double click on the little FX icon to bring up your layer styles again. Tick on gradient overlay. Awesome. Now that we've done that, here's where things are going to get a little tricky. Select the gradient bar. And I've saved the gradient, but I'm going to explain to you guys how you can create the gradient if you're following along. I'm going to select this metal gradient here, and here's what I've done. I've started off with the same exact gray on both ends. That's important. You want the same gray at zero location, here's the location, and the same, the, the exact same gray at 100% location, so both ends of the gradient. That gray is B2, 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 but maybe more easy to remember is just 70% brightness. There's no hue, no saturation. It's just plain monochromatic gray, 70% brightness at both ends. Then I have a color stop I've added to 15%, 15% location. This color stop is 85% brightness. The next color stop is at 30%, and this color stop is 65% brightness. Another color stop here added at 45%, that's 90% brightness. Another one added at 60% brightness, this one's at 60% location. And then the final color stop at 75% location, that one's all the way up at 85% brightness. So go ahead and dial in those settings for your gradient, and even you can save the gradient if you want. Hit OK. Once you've created that gradient, we need to do one very important thing here to make, give it a realistic metal look, and that's to change the style. We want to change the style to angle. 
you can see now we have this sort of cool button knob effect. And now that we've done that, we're going to go ahead and add a drop shadow to the shape. So let's go ahead up here and select drop shadow to turn that on. And we're going to do a few things here. You normally think of the drop shadow as being a shadow. It's casting a dark shadow of whatever the object is that light is hitting. But in this case, we're going to use this really to add a little bit more depth to the shape and almost make this look like it's being impressed into this dark gray, grainy, leathery stuff that we've created as our background. So we're going to go ahead immediately and change the blend mode and color. Change the blend mode to normal and change the color to white. Okay, so you can see not really looking like a shadow at all and looking like a very bad embossing job. We really don't want that. Take off, use global light, and set the angle to 90 degrees. Now we're going to simply set the distance to 3 pixels and the size to 0 pixels. So what we have happening is this shadow is coming straight down below our shape, and it, there's absolutely no fall off, no blur. It just it cuts to a straight, clean end. The opacity is a bit strong. Let's reduce that to about 20%. Okay, great. Now that we've done that, we need to go ahead and add a stroke. Now this is kind of a cool little tip when you're using layer styles. We're going to add this stroke, not because we want to see a stroke. Matter of fact, I'm going to zoom in by hitting Command or Control Plus a little bit so we can see what's going on. Whoop, and I closed out my layer style dialog box there. Let's open that guy back up. What I want to do is, let me just shut off the stroke for a second to explain. I want to create a, just a very thin line between the edge of the button and this drop shadow we've created so this button will look like it's sitting beneath this lip which this lighter colored drop shadow is creating. You're going to see exactly what I mean by that in a moment. But instead of creating multiple layers, we can do it all here within these same layer styles. Go ahead and tick stroke on and set the size to 1. The color here doesn't matter. All we need to do is reduce the opacity to 0%. And you can see it's cutting a little channel right there through the shadow. If we increase the size to 2, it's going to make more of our shadow or our white line disappear. I want just to be a very thin line, so now it's giving the impression there's a little bit of three dimension, a little bit of depth there. Go ahead and hit OK. Now what we need to go ahead and do is create a pattern. We're going to apply a pattern texture to this metal button to give it just a little bit more pop, a little bit more excellence is in the details, I'll put it that way. We like to spend a lot of time working on the details because if you can go that extra 10%, your work's going to go from being good to great. It's going to go from being just nice to incredible. So we're going to create a new document, File New. This is going to be pretty simple. Width of 5 pixels, height of 5 pixels. Don't worry about giving it a name or any of that good stuff. Go ahead and hit OK. And we're just going to hit Command or Control-0. It's going to zoom our document all the way in like this because it is so small. We're going to grab the Pencil tool located beneath the Brush tool. And we're going to hit the letter D. It's going to set our foreground color to black, really going to give us default colors. Go ahead and draw out a little plus here. It's just five clicks with the Pencil tool. Click, 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 click. Just like that. Now go Edit, Define Pattern, and you can name this pattern if you want. I'm going to hit OK, and we can close this document. We're done with it. We've created a pattern. Now what we need to do is apply this pattern. Well, so we could go Layer, Layer Style, Pattern Overlay, except Pattern Overlay sits beneath the Gradient Overlay, and we wouldn't see the pattern. So we're kind of stuck creating a new layer here. So we're going to go ahead and duplicate this layer. Select the layer, hit Command or Control J to duplicate it. Right-click on the layer. Well, I'm not going to right-click because I'll be moving off screen. Maybe if I click out here. Nope, not going to happen. Select the layer and go Layer, Layer Style, Clear Layer Style. You can also do this by right-clicking on the layer and scrolling down and hitting Clear Layer Style. There we go. You can see it's even refilled our fill opacity back up to 100%. We want to kill that again. Knock out the fill opacity. Now we're going to go Layer, Layer Style, Pattern Overlay. And if you guessed we're going to select our pattern, you guessed right, which is right here. You can see I've done a couple others, just trying out some different sizing. Go ahead and select the last one we created. and. We need to do a couple things. We want to knock out the white, so we're going to set the blend mode to multiply. Just going to leave us with our black pluses. And you can scale this up or down if you want, but typically scaling within the layer styles box is going to really start, Photoshop starts tripping out on your, pa uh, on your patterns and really does not do a good job of re-rendering them at different percentage sizes. So we're going to stick with the straight up 100%. And we're going to reduce the opacity down to like 5%, something very, very low. So it's a very subtle pattern. Go ahead and hit OK. Now that we've done this, we want to go ahead and duplicate this layer. Command or Control J, and again, layer, layer style, clear layer style. You can see it even brings back that fill opacity, which we're going to knock out of here in just a second. Layer, layer style, and let's go to blending options so we can kill that, uh, that white real quick. So we're going to knock out that fill opacity, 
and we're going to apply a gradient overlay here. So I'm going to go gradient overlay. Tick that right on. You can see simple default black to white gradient. We're going to go ahead and change that. We're going to set this on this side to a very vibrant, just the brightest of bright reds. It's just FF0000. And then we're going to go for a somewhat darker red over here. Um, let's go for something like AE0000. All right, something like that, a little bit darker. Very nice, hit OK. And just like that, that's exactly what we want. Darker at the top, lighter at the bottom. Now that we've done that, go ahead and hit OK. Let's resize this shape down to the size uh, our button should be uh, sort of, well, it's going to be smaller. It's going to be encased in the metal. So I'm going to go Edit, Free Transform Path, Note the Hotkey, Command or Control T. Very, very useful hotkey if you're not very familiar with Photoshop. Now that we've got our Free Transform handles, hold down the Shift or Alt or shift option keys and scale this guy right to the center. I'm going to scale mine back to right around 37, 38%, something like that. Look for what looks good and check that to commit those changes. Now that we've done that, we're going to go ahead and add an inner shadow to this as well. So double click on the little effects icon and it's going to bring up our layer styles box. We're going to add inner shadow. We're going to tick off use global light and we're going to set the angle to 30 right off the bat because we just want that shadow coming straight down from the top. Reduce the opacity to about 50% and set the blend mode to soft light. We want some interaction with that color. Now, it's a little too faded, so let's reduce the distance to about 3 and reduce the size, which is really the edge blur on this shadow, to about 1 pixel. There we go. Nice little blur we've got happening there. That looks great. And we also need to apply an outer glow. So just go ahead and tick on outer glow. We're going to leave the blend mode as screen. We're going to reduce the opacity a little bit. Let's drop it down to about 45 and reduce the size just a hair, maybe four, something like that. There we go. I like that. Not going to mess with it too terribly much beyond that. Go ahead and hit OK. Now that we've done that, let's just zoom out. I'm going to zoom it out to 100%. Looks great. I'm going to zoom it out so I can see the whole thing on screen. And the button does look a little big. So let's just select all three of these layers. And we're going to right click on the layers, uh, if I can here, get it on screen. And there's this option link layers, barely on screen for you. We're just going to link all of them together. Just, just for the heck of it, it's just a little cool feature that, that you can do in Photoshop. We could just as easily select all three. Hit Command or Control T and just scroll this guy down or size him down a little bit. I'm holding down my Shift and Alt keys on the Mac. That'd be Shift and Option. I'm going to commit those changes. And we've got our nice little record button. Uh, one other thing, because again, ambiance is a lot uh, of, of the effect of your interface, and this would probably be used in an interface. We're just going to go ahead and we're going to throw an adjustment layer in here just above the background layer. Curves adjustment layer. I'm going to leave it named Curves. And I'm going to close the adjustments panel. I'm going to open up my layers panel. With the curves layer selected, we're going to set that to screen. Way too bright. So here, this is kind of a cool trick with adjustment layers. You can just select all, Command or Control A, and then Command or Control I to just invert the color. But again, since it's a, an adjustment layer, there's no color to actually flip on the layer. And Photoshop just knows, hey, he's got to be talking about the mask. So I'm just going to flip the mask, make it black, fill it in with black. Beautiful. Command or Control D to deselect. And let's just grab, you can use a brush tool, you can use the lasso tool. Let's just sort of create this inverted mountain shape like so. And we're going to go select, modify, feather. Let's spread this by about 150 pixels. You know, let's go all out. Let's go for 200 and hit OK. And you can see we've got this nice little shape here. And again, we have our layer adjustment layer, layer mask selected. We're going to hit Command or Control L. That's going to open up the good old levels dialog. And what we're going to do is just drag this output levels black slider back just a little bit. OK, we're going to drag it back a lot. We're going to drag it all the way over to the other side. Hit OK. And you can see what we've done. We've created kind of a cool little effect. You can see it in our mask. And I actually might want to intensify it. I'm going to bring up the levels dialog again. I'm going to drag it over even more, like so. Hit OK. Hit Command or Control D to deselect. You can see just that one little adjustment layer is going to give us that nice ambient effect to make it look like a spotlight's coming down or just give some shape to the background. And that's it. You've created this button. It's super easy, super fast, and it's very, very editable down the road. You can change colors and gradients and everything you'd ever want to do. And you can scroll it or size it up, scale it up and down as big or small as you want within reason, of course. And that's it. I hope you've learned a thing or two. Hope you've enjoyed it. Make sure you check out the site. That's www.tutvid.com. And stay tuned for more great tutorials in this series of tutorials brought to you by tutvid.com and iceflowstudios.com. Enjoy, guys.